So, blessed people, let's get started again. Watu wabarikiwa, wacha tuanze tena. Now, we would want to look at the church age today, beginning from Revelation chapter 2, all the way to the end of chapter 3. Sasa, tunataka kuanza kuangazia majira ya kanisa leo hii, kuanzia na kitabu cha ufunu sura ya pili, kote kote hadi mwisho wa sura ya tatu. And in this journey, you are going to realize that the Lord is speaking directly to the church. To the present day church. Even though that message was tailored as though, as though tailored to the seven churches in Asia Minor. But you'll see that the seven churches define the church age. And when you reach the last church, the seventh church, the church in Laodicea, then you realize that that church is actually synonymous with the church we have today. So, in the process, we are going to meet Revelation chapter 3, Verses 10 and 11, which are going to be our anchor for the rapture of the church. And that is where we are going to expand from to become expansive on the message of the rapture and then rendition. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 and 18 that we had began. So let's go right straight to Revelation chapter 2, blessed people on your screen. And it says to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. You're going to find that the manner in which the Lord identifies himself for, to a particular church has something to do with the, with the condition and the message for the church. The manner of identification has something to do with the message to that church. And that's why, and that's why he says. I know your deeds. So you are going to find that in this message that the Lord is giving to the seven churches, this is Jesus now giving a message to the church direct, dictating. Literally dictating it and it's being written by dictation. And he says, you're going to find that he keeps saying, I know your deeds. And he does not say, I know your faith. And I know you live in an age when in church you have been told you are not supposed to do anything. The yeah. grace has finished it. It's a finished job. But you see that the Lord is speaking here loud and clear. And he's literally saying that when you are born again, you undergo what we call the regeneration of your heart. And that regeneration of the heart should be able now to transform your conduct from the inward to the outward. So it says, I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. 
The Lord comes right up front against apostasy. Against decay in the church right away from square one. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. The Lord encourages perseverance on persecution, tolerance. Endurance, perseverance. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first, your first love. Consider how far you have fallen Repent and do the things you did at first. Again, he exalts repentance as the only way for the church to go back to a meeting the true light of Christ. If you do not repent, I'll come to you and remove your lampstand from his place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I'll give the right to sit, uh, I mean, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. To the angel of the church in Smyrna. So, so this, the, we have finished the first message, the first church. And what you see, blessed people, you'll see that the Lord is writing these letters to a particular church, a local church. And those letters were produced for all the seven churches. So every pastor that was called by John to come in the island of Patmos to get his letter also got the other letters. Okay, so uh, I'm a same at a He's saying the Lord wrote each letter to each church, each of the seven churches. But when they were giving them, they gave each pastor seven letters. Each messenger of the Lord to the church had other letters too that appertain to other churches, the other six churches. And so you see very clearly here that the Lord was writing these letters to the local church. For example, to the local church, to the local church, for, to the community church. For example, the church in Ephesus. And then he also wrote they applied to all the churches also. And then at the end in verse 7 if you see he says whoever has ears again verse 7 if our person doing the scripture will just be awake you say verse 7 it says whoever has ears and so there he is referring to the individual believer so these letters apply to the local church to all churches and to the personal message of a personal believer intended for the local church for all churches and also a personal message to the individual Christian to you that is tuned in listening to me
But Christo, if you say, they will understand even better. And you realize that the Lord has laid a structure on these letters. At first he gives the name of the church. Then you hear the Lord introducing himself with a title. Like here he says the one that holds the stars the seven stars, and then walks between the seven golden lampstands. So for each of them, for each of them, he identifies the local church. And then he gives himself that he now presents his decoration, his title to them. And that introduction of Jesus to that church has so much to do with the message. After his title, then he, then he brings in commendation. He brings in what he likes about that church. After that, then there is condemnation, rebuke. And then after that, there is exhortation that whoever has ears should listen. 